everyone, and welcome to NYC Apartment Building Chat. Today, I have the great pleasure of having Elizabeth Sanchez Vaughn, the founder and owner of Insight Interior Design. Elizabeth is from New York or in New York, and she does all kinds of residential and commercial design, and she's going to tell me more. So welcome, welcome, Elizabeth. How are you today? Hi, Tina. Thank you so much for allowing me to come on. I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you doing? I am doing great. And we're <laughs> going to have a great conversation here. This is NYC Apartment Building Chat, where we talk about various uh, items and areas and with various professionals about all kinds of things that we think is valuable for the New York City co-op, condo and multifamily industry and property owners. So Elizabeth, tell me, how did you end up becoming an interior designer? Well, thank you, Tina. Um, I really am an artist at heart. Uh, and when I, I was younger, that's all I did. And somehow interior design just appealed to me because I'm a very practical person too. So when I'm on projects, practical practicality is really important. Um, but I'm a fine artist. So interior design combines those two things. I create spaces that are functional and they make people happy. So I've been designing for over 30 years. It sounds like such a long time. And I've worked on so many different project types, but multifamily is actually my favorite project type. So um, I'm happy to be here with you today. Thank you so much. So you take your artistic talents or creativity yes. and you put it together with your practicality and then you apply it to making your customers have happy spaces. What can be better exactly. than that, right? What can be better than that? Uh, one of my favorite things is when a client walks into the space and they go, oh my gosh, this is so great. And that's what I live for. That's what I work really hard for because um, what's interesting about multifamily and why I like it so much is that I am able to design spaces that a lot of people walk through. Lobbies, recreation rooms, rooftop terraces. And then sometimes I also get to design the prototypical apartment and new developments. That's really fun. Um, or I'll work on residential apartments. So whatever it is, I always want not only my direct client to be happy, but the public at large who's ever using the space. So I'm in the business of making people feel good. Right? Oh, Live their best lives through design. That's wonderful. And who doesn't want to make people feel good, right? <laughs> right, right. So you do this all over New York or nationwide? We're pretty much a metropolitan New York firm. Um, we've worked in all the boroughs, Staten Island included. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's great. But okay. we can travel. We've also done work in New Jersey, um, but it's mostly metropolitan New York area. Okay, great. And one, what is one of your most fun projects? Oh gosh, I have so many. Um, over the course of my many years, um, I would say it's definitely uh, one of our multifamily lobbies that we designed. And it's a tough choice, but I'm going to tell you about the one in Brooklyn that we most recently designed. Mm -hmm. You know, New York is on a strong grid, very orthogonal. The project we designed was in um, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and it was on one of those angular streets. So we actually worked on using, incorporating angles as part of the design motifs. And it was, it was very cool. You know, during the course of constructions, there might be an 18 month construction lead time. Things change, things discover, get discovered during construction. So the lobby probably went through three different variations, but we were able to keep the, the motif intact and the lobby came out great. So it's it was a really fun project for us. Wow. How long did it take from start to finish though, with all of those angles and recreating the design after <laughs> discovery three times. I mean, that must have taken a very long time. It did. It's it's interesting because we designed the lobby once, did all the drawings, everything was good to go. And then the client switched gears. They wanted to make the lobby smaller. And yeah, and you know, 
accumulate some of that space for the recreation room instead of in the lobby. So we really actually it went more towards package room, I should say, rather than recreation room. Um, but we did, so we went through the second round. So I'm going to tell you that we designed it the first time. It must have been like uh, six to nine months between concept to final construction drawings. And then a year later, we did the same thing with the smaller lobby. So um, it's it's a time consuming process. And in the meantime, all the other floors are getting built, other construction, construction issues come in. Um, it's a wonderful process. I love being on site on construction sites. One of my fascinating um, experiences was going up in one of the construction elevators that's on the outside of the building. I was <gasps> you scared did to death. That? It that? was so cool. Yeah, so we've done that a few times, but I have my own hard hat. I'm cool. <laughs> and how many floors was that elevator, though? The um, on that one, I think it was 12 was probably oh, uh, that's the not, highest I've ever been. On that. Th that's yeah. not so bad. Because it's the not one, so bad, no. <laughs> the, one, the new one down by Grand Central, have you seen it? Oh, yes. The SOM oh, building. Oh, I mean, I start getting fear when I look at it from the outside. <laughs> yes. I would yeah. never go in one of those elevators. <laughs> I'm game. I love yeah. it. <laughs> and do you know about topping out parties? Those are really fun. No. When the last floor of a new construction building is built, they have a topping out party. So everybody who's working on the project gets invited, but it's just net mesh and netting around the perimeter. No framing, no windows, no walls. It's very cool. <laughs> wow. That sounds a little too high up and too scary for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the second floor and I can hardly wash my own windows because I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we all have our different fears, right? This is true. So, <laughs> so that all sounds so exciting. And so when should a co-op condo board or apartment building owner or a new developer call you? So if it's a new developer, they want to call me when they're in the process of almost finalizing the building shell drawings. Because from there, we take those shell drawings and then do everything. We do lighting design, we do finishes, we do full furniture, and uh, any of the space planning that they haven't done. For co and condos and renovations, they want me involved when from the beginning, when they're deciding that, yes, they're going ahead, say, for a lobby renovation. You come in with the beginning. Um, I'm working on a project right now that we are doing. Um, we have to add ramps for to satisfy ADA. And it's going to be a very exciting project, but I'm working with architect. I bring in the architect myself, and we work as a team. So it's fun. Very nice. And I hear, mm -hmm. do you have to take that? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Trying to silence it while it's okay. <laughs> we all get phone calls, right? So that's yeah. so we, so so a board, an existing building should call you at the very beginning of their project. Well, a developer should too. So basically, anybody should call <laughs> you at the beginning of their project. That's yes. the easiest. Design is the basis, absolutely. Of course it is. Of course it is. And do they usually bring in the designer first or the architect first? Um, depends. New developments will bring in the architect first for sure. You're talking about building shell. For the Copen condos, um, usually it's the interior designer. I like working. There are particular architects that I've worked with in the past that we have a really great relationship and we're a great team. So then it could be interior designer first. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with me. This was fantastic. <laughs> and for everybody who, who listened in to this, uh, Please make sure that you listen in for our, for our next one. And for this one, what we're going to do is I'm going to put Elizabeth's contact information uh, on this uh, on the end of the video and also in the comments down below. I'm assuming you're seeing this on social media. And thank you, Elizabeth, so much for joining me today. Thank you, Tina. It was fun speaking with you.